Hey guys, so I picked up a saw today. It's a little deceiving. Uh, has a still case, a nice still case actually. Um, it's about a 30 minute drive away. And uh, it's a uh, Husqvarna 44, which is actually a pretty old saw, but uh, has these cool manuals. And uh, this case, so here, let's put this over here. We'll go through those in a little bit in a minute. Um, but surprisingly, it's in extremely good shape. Um, I fired it up and it runs great, just like the guy said. In the pictures, I thought it had a crack, but it's just the seal that's coming out. So we'll have to take a look at that. It has a lot of compression, so that's awesome. Uh, chain brake works. We'll have to go over that too because there's some adjusting that needs to be done. Um, But yeah, it's in really good condition. It has the plastic tank. And you can tell how good it was kept. I mean, there's a piece of fabric in there, for, which is awesome. Um, the chain looks to be in pretty good condition, but will need to be sharpened. So let's take it into the shop and we'll take the cover off it and do a bit of a video on this. Okay. So, as you can see, it's, I don't know if you can see that label. But overall, it's in very good condition. has a lot of compression and everything works so that's awesome yeah I saw this saw uh, that it, it was listed uh, last night and uh, you know it's dirty, but we'll clean that up. But it's not broken, so that's cool. And I thought, like I said, I thought this was a, uh, in the picture it looked like there was a crack on the starter, which I didn't know if I was gonna like or not. Um, It's just like a little gasket. It's not broken. It's just maybe not put in properly. Still has the plastic piece on the... On the... Here, let's bring it down. Still has the plastic piece on the high and low jet. Almost has like a setup like a still would have. You can see down in there. 
where those pieces where those pieces push into the plastic. I don't know if that's the same, but I know I've seen stills that are like that, and that must be for the idle. Okay, here on this side. I was just quickly reading those books and this is actually one of the measurements is from the handle to this is supposed to be five millimeters so it's not quite adjusted properly but it works um, parts for these saws are hard to get you can get some parts on eBay but I don't need any the adjusters there so we'll tighten that up it has that uh, stock muffler. I don't see. Okay, this has the gasket on this side as well. So we'll clean that up. I'll leave that one on. It'd be interesting to know if this is all stock, but it all looks very clean. Very clean indeed. You can see it's a it's a good chain. It's almost new, but it is a bit worn out. I thought I hadn't seen one of these old 44s before because there's not a lot of videos about them online, and I thought this was the uh, it had a manual oiler, but it's an automatic oiler. And the chokes on this side. There's nothing on this side. Um, the filter looks nice. There's a bit of wear on there, but I mean, this is a 1980s saw, right? So it's, that's expected. That wasn't too tight. It's a bit oily in there. We'll have to clean this. But overall, it's actually quite clean. It's not the optimal setup because of the, the bolts in the middle, but that's how they did it back then. And I'm going to get, right now I don't have the best uh, mix there for the gas. I'm going to make sure I get at least or 50 to 1 or 40 to 1 for this saw. Um, It was $120 for this with the case included and those manuals, which is more than I usually like to spend. I like to spend about $50 on saws and fix them up, but there's really nothing wrong with this one. And so I've been doing really well fixing and selling chainsaws lately. So um, I figured I'll get a nicer one and I'm sure I could make more on it. I'm probably not going to sell this one though. Um, I may sell that case because I don't really need that case and I think that'll really make this saw uh, a lot more, uh, um, like if I sell it for 40 bucks then this saw only costs a little bit, right? Um, and yeah, 
so far it's looking really good. There's a guy on YouTube I watch, um, All Command. I'll try to leave it in the description. Um, I think he probably has the best uh, videos on chainsaws, probably on YouTube. He has tons of videos, and it's just very in-depth, and it's very... Um, well, he has a friend that owns a shop, and they have these like videos that are like chainsaw colleges. And when I was when I saw this... I then, because I knew about this guy on YouTube, I went and watched uh, his series on the uh, 40s through 44 or 444s, 4s, but they have the colleges on the 266s and uh, it's just a lot of in-depth, like this guy has like, it's almost like a museum worth of saws, like it's awesome. Um, and for people that like chainsaws and fixing chainsaws and Chinese aftermarket parts, which this one doesn't have a lot of Chinese after. There's like zero parts for this, but he does kit saws and testing and check them out. Um, yeah. Anyways, and so these are the manuals I got. They're not as thick as I thought they were going to be, but still have a lot of good information. 1980. So, this is the owner's manual. just a lot of good information and like you can see 50 to 1 this stuff hasn't really changed all that much throughout the years really these are like I said to the guy I mean to me these are extremely valuable I mean, adjusting the chain break, as you can see, that gap I was talking to you. Adjusting the carburetor, one turn out. I don't think that sticker is on. Yeah, that sticker isn't on mine anymore. Cleaning the air filter. It's just pretty much the same. I was so happy that that wasn't cracked and it was just that I didn't know it had a gasket. And then... Uh, Starting a chainsaw cold. <laughs> maintenance of the saw and weekly maintenance and monthly maintenance. So that's the owner's manual. And here's the parts manual. But you can't get a lot of these parts anymore. But 
I like how stock this is. Like, there's, it's not all, there's not different cylinders on it, different mufflers. It's all very, and that's a question I've been having is, if this coil does go bad, which I don't think you can get anymore, can you put a Husqvarna 50 on there? It looks the same. That'd be a question I have, even though mine's fine. And then the whole breakdown of the carb. All right. So there's the manuals. Burden the mess. So, uh, you'll probably see more of this bad boy. Um, well, I'm going to do some maintenance to it and just take care of it. Hope you guys like this little uh, preview, kind of review, kind of video on this Husqvarna 44. Um, I hope you like it. There's the tag better. So, 04. 33. I don't know if that means it's 84. But just let me know. Let's see if these ones are loose too. No, that one's tight. That one's tight. Well, take care. Have a good weekend. Alright, guys. Okay, guys. So, I got the chain all sharpened up. Let's see how it cuts. I got it back in the case now sure is a nice little unit um, I'll have to do some cleaning up with it and grease that little needle bearing but I I opened the low up a bit more and I actually opened the high up a little bit more too because I thought it was just revving a bit too high when I first got it um, so they're both at like one and a quarter maybe a little less than that um, as you can see, I 
sharpened it with uh, my tools. Um, and I really did have to take the rakers down quite a bit to get it cutting nicely. But uh, anyways, talk to you later. Bye.